we look in the book of Philippians, we realize that Paul is writing this epistle in a prison. You see, the amazing thing to me is how he's able to lift the name of Jesus while he's in isolation. You see, true ministry is, is, is when, you are eight, when you are in isolation and when you're locked down, but you're still able to still call on the name of Jesus. You see, this epistle is a Christ-centered epistle. This is one of the greatest passages ever written about Jesus Christ. It paints a perfect picture of him. You see, many people try to give a worldly definition of Christ, but Paul gives us a simple definition. Mm. Yes. He's the, he tells them that he's the name that is above everything. Yes. He sees he's above your issues, he's above your problems. Yes. Many people don't believe in the name of Jesus. Problem. You see, but as bold believers, we must trust in his name. Yes. You see, Jesus humbled himself, and he laid aside his eternal glory and came down to earth yes. to come to this corrupt world. He came to save humanity. He came yes. to help. He came to die on the cross for us. Yes. You see, he, uh, he humbled himself to the point of other humiliation. Mm -hmm. The God, the Father had a, a plan and he said, I need my son to go down. Yes. You see, he came to earth to die for our sins. Yes. You see, this assignment sounds very difficult to many, but it was a loving plan from the Father. Yes. You see, isn't it amazing how a father can show true love to his children? Yes. You see, many people feel that they have no love, but the true love is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Someone asked me, what is love? I just point to the cross because that's where yes. love is. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Christ was exalted because he followed and obeyed God even to the cross. Mm. Are you obedient to God's will? Yeah. Even when things get rough, are you obeying his will? You see, many people want ministry, but they don't understand the hard task of ministry. Oh, yeah. Many people don't understand that you have to go through something. You see, but Jesus, when he came down, he did not come on a glorified cloud. He did not come to be a, king, a mighty, arrogant king, but he came as a servant. Yes. Yes. Question is, are you a servant? Yes. Are, you, are you willing to serve and help to build the ministry? Yes. You see, while he was punished on the cross, he still followed the will of God. You yes. see, even in pain and suffering, we still have to follow the will of God. Yes. You see, his name deserves worship because he showed great love to us. You see, I'm reminded in John 3, 16, when it says, So for God, so love the word, he gave me his only begotten son. Yeah. That whoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. You see, he loved us so much because he knew that he needed a savior to come. Yeah. He knew that somebody had to come down. Mm -hmm. You see, I remember, you know, people, we love the show Blacklist. You know, Blacklist is a show of where many names are of criminals and people that have done wrong. You see, but the original Blacklist was in Matthew's gospel. Oh, Matthew's God. 1. Because when you look at the gospel, it had name of Adam, Abraham, yes. every single person down to Jesus. But I realized Adam couldn't save me because he ate the fruit and did wrong. Abraham couldn't do it. Noah couldn't do it. So we looked down the genealogy. David couldn't do it because he killed someone. Solomon couldn't do it because he wasn't wise enough. So we looked down the genealogy. Then we get to verse 20 and 21. Then he says Jesus. So now we created a white list. You see, now his list is different because he's the one that's pure enough to save us. He's the one that was able to go on the cross for us. You see, I'm so glad that his name is the only name that really helped me out and built me to where I was. You see, it was not the famous names of Donald Trump and Obama and things like that, but it was his name that brought me forth. Somebody say his name. You see, I know many of us have a testimony, many of us, you know, about the goodness of the Lord. Many of us have a story about how God changed our lives. You see, he deserves worship because he's a mighty God and Savior. I remember the song says, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. You see, Jesus is the only one that can fix your life and make it brand new. You see, you have many broken people and broken things and broken things going on in the world. But he's the only one that can fix it. You see, many people believe in different ideologies and schisms and different philosophies. But we must hold on to the power of Jesus. You see, many people of today in the 21st century underestimate the power of Jesus. You see, but I, I understand that as he's doing these great things, he deserves worship. Come on. Yes, you see, Bishop D has taught a wonderful lesson on worship. Now, many are wondering, what is worship? The Bible doesn't give a formal definition of worship. Worship means to show reverence and adoration. You see, as Christian believers, we must have an attitude of worship. We must wake up and just worship the Lord because he deserves the worship. Mm -hmm. Worship is the mentality every Christian should have. Yes. You see, before you run and before you run and go through your day, you should worship the God. You should worship during your day. You yes. should worship him while you're at work. Mm -hmm. 
Worship is a, is not a routine. It's something that you need to do. Yes. It's something that you love to do. Yes. You see, yeah. God responds to our worship by making our heart more like his. Yes. You see, whenever somebody's cold-hearted and mean, it's because their worship level is low. Yes. You see, they don't love to worship and give God what he deserves. They don't love to tithe and be a servant. They love to sit on the throne and not give and help. You see, but as believers, we should focus our eyes on God. You see, in the midst of J Japan going crazy, in the midst of Paris being bombed, in the midst of things happening, we should focus our eyes on him. Because he's the only one that can fix our problems. Many of us look towards the government, but they can't help us. Many of us have tried to look towards Obama, but he's the one that can help. It's Jesus Christ that can help. He's the only name that's above every name. Everybody say, every name. Now, as we look in the scripture, as we look in scriptures, we realize that he said highly exalted him. You see, God the Father gave him this name because he knew that his name had purpose. You see, every parent in here to name their child. And kiss, I told somebody, I said, whenever you name a child, you, you're, you're giving them what they deserve. You're giving them what God, what, what's going to need what they need in life. You see, whenever you give somebody a bad name, that's a bad reputation of the parent. But when you give somebody a good name, it shows value and yes. love for the child. Yes. You see, I'm blessed that my, my parents gave me the name Joshua because they knew that I was called for something That's great. Yeah, yeah. You see, many people don't know when they name their child, they don't understand their child has to go through life and they have to have a certain path. That's right. That's right. You see, but I realized something, number one, we have healing in his name. Yes. You see, he's a mighty healer. As you yes. realize, you know, in the midst of sicknesses and things like that and diseases, he's still a healing miracle worker. Yes, he is. You see... As we look in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they mention many miracles that Jesus has performed. Uh -huh. You see, his miracles weren't performed to just physical healing. Mm -hmm. You see, like many people of today, they have seen many doctors, clinics, and hospitals. Oh, wow. You know, we have Dr. Phil, and he can't give you the prescription. We have Dr. Oz, but he's the one that can't yeah. give you the solution. Mm -hmm. But you see, many people have become very discouraged, hopeless, and very depressed. You see, have people who's feeling down and sad, but they don't know that there's a man named Jesus that can help them. Yes. Yes, sir. You see, are you tired of having no answers to your prayers? Are you mm -hmm. tired of being waking up in the middle of the night and you don't know what to do? You feel like throwing in the towel. Yes. You see, but I came to encourage you this morning that, my dear friend, there's still hope for you. Yes. You may feel hopeless, you may feel down, you may feel discouraged, but there's still hope for you. Yes. You see, I'm reminded in Mark chapter 10, 27, with men, this is impossible. Yes. But not with God. For with yes. God, all things are possible. Yes. Yes. You see, the mission was not impossible. Mm -hmm. You see, he came down because he knew he, somebody needed his help. Yes. Yes. You see, it may be impossible, but nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You see, but I want you to understand something. Men's extremity becomes God's opportunity. Mm -hmm. yes. You see, many people trust in man. Many people trust in the gimmicks and jokes and lies of today. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand the power of God. You see, but man may always fail you, but God will never fail you. You see, you must hold on to him and keep him. Yes. You see, in the midst of people failing, in the midst of people messing up and things like that, God is always on your side. Yes. Because you able to say, God will never leave you. God will never leave you. He's the only one that keeps you. Yes. He's the only one that loves you. He's the only one that keeps on loving you. Yes. His love is, is limitless. Yes. Yes. You see, but I realize, number two, we have authority in his name. Yes. You see, many people don't trust and the authority of Jesus Christ. Many people don't understand the things that's going on in the world. You see, many people don't understand the power that you have as a Christian. You see, you have the power to lay hands on the sick. You have the power to pray. You have the power to love. You have the power to help, to build and, and keep on enduring. You see, but as this Christian walk, we all must carry our cross. We all must keep on going, building to more to forward. You see, many people, they like when things are happy. They love when things are easy and quick. Mm, you yeah. see, many people love convenience, but people don't like commitment. You see, people don't like being committed. People don't like staying and praying and serving and building and moving. Yeah. You see, I told someone, I said, I'm, I'm glad that Global is moving forward because I remember when Global was just the three of us. Amen. It was just nobody there, no resources, no things, no plans. Mm. But God was able to be faithful and push yeah. us to where we are now. And I'm blessed to see Global even go further than where it is now. You see, many of many people don't understand the strength that they have in their hands. You see, you have healing hands. Your hands are to move and to move and to break forth and to get things done. You see, but devils were powerless because of this powerful name. You see, Jesus cast out many demons while he was on earth. You see, but I realize something. If you need to be saved, I know a name that can save you. If you need to be forgiven, I know a name that can wash away your sins. You see, if you want a new life, I know a name that can give you new life here and now. Yeah. 
Yes. He's the one that can heal. He's the one that can push you forward. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, many people are trying to figure out and wonder about this mighty name. Mm -hmm. The mighty name of Jesus. His name yes. is the sweetest name that I know. Yes. His name can break off chains off of your life. Yes. Call upon his name and you will be saved. Yes. Try out to him with all your heart. Yes. Don't look to others for help, but look to Jesus for yes. help. Yes. You see, I understand I understand that you have to call on to Jesus because no one else can help me. You yeah. see, when I'm messed up, I can't go to my phone. I have to go to the throne. Yeah. You see, I must go to his throne of mercy. Yeah. I must stretch out my hand and say, Lord, help me. Yeah. I remember I was talking to someone. I remember I was going through something. They said, oh, man, I don't know what to tell you. I said, no, God has me. They yeah. like, what do you mean? I said, God is the only one that can yeah. help me and push yeah. me. You see, he's the, I believe in his authority because he's the only one that pushed me from middle school, that pushed me into high school, and now I'm a college man. You see, he's the only one that can push me from when I was sick over three years ago, but now I'm healed. You see, there's no name like the name of Jesus. It's the only name that can save us. You see, we have the authority even today. We must exercise the authority in Jesus' name. Yeah. We must not be afraid. You see, Christians today are afraid and they want to just buck with the trend and don't want to preach about stuff and get nervous. But we must have authority and boldness. Yeah. Everyone say boldness. boldness. You see, we must not be afraid as we walk this Christian walk. In this journey called life, we must hold on to Jesus. Yeah. Many of people are asking, who is Jesus? Look at your name and say, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? I'm glad you asked. I'd like to give you a few definitions of Jesus. Well, in chemistry, he turned water into wine. In biology, he was born with a, without a normal conception. In physics, he disproved the law of gravity when he went to heaven. In economics, he broke the law of dis diminishing return by feeding the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. In medicine, he cured the sick and the blind without giving pharmacy pills or drugs. Yes. In history, he's beginning and the end. Hallelujah. In government, he's no one, no one comes to the Father except through him. Yes. So who is he? He's Jesus Christ. Yes. His name is bigger than any earthly name. Yes. So people get fixated on names of, of, of earth. Everybody get fixated on, oh, I want Obama to help me. Obama cannot help you. Yes. You see, many people have tried to build their own empires. But you see, but God is the only yes. one that can build and keep on building. Yes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes. You see, people don't realize the power of Jesus' name. See, many people have think that they have their own power. Many people think they have their own authority. Many people think that they're their own God. But the only God that's worthy and is worthy of the praise is Jesus. You see now, Proverbs 18. We are told that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Strong tower. You see, I realize, you know, towers are built to last and endurance. But he's the strength that I can lean and depend on. As I was reading literature, I remember I was reading William Shakespeare, and he wrote Richard III. And Richard said a powerful line. The person next to him was afraid and terrified of the enemy. Yeah. You see, have you ever been terrified and scared? Yeah. Have you been shook where well, you didn't know what to do? Where well, you, you, you was trying to figure out what's going on? Who's going to help me? Yes. So they were about to fight. But Richard said something to him. As I was in the library reading this, I just started running around the library. <laughs> he said... The king's name is a tower of strength. You see, the person next to him reminded him, you see, don't worry about everything else. We have yeah. a king's name. That's a tower of strength. Yeah. You see, everybody tries to build their empires. Yes. Everybody tries to build their kingdoms, but they're going to crumble. Come you see, Jesus is the only tower that won't fall. Yeah. You see, everything, everybody puts their hopes in everything else. Everybody puts their hopes in people and put their hopes in ideas, but my hope is built yeah. on nothing less yeah. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. All yeah. Christ. The solid rock I stand. He's the only one that's the solid rock that I stand on. Everybody else is sinking. ISIS, you are sinking. Trump, you're sinking. Obama, you're sinking. White House, you're sinking. America is sinking. But he's the one that I hold on to. Somebody said he's the whole he's the one I hold on to. You see, but Jesus is so amazing. He has done the impossible in our lives. He's the only one I know that can take a broke man and make him a millionaire. He's one person that can take a poor person and make them wealthy. He's one that can take somebody sick and heal them. I'm an example of that because he healed my body. You see, I remember when I was in the hospital and people would tell, the doctor would tell me, oh, this looks bad. Oh, things don't look right. Oh, you're going to die, this and that. And he kept telling me, and I said, no, I'm going to hold on to Jesus. I told somebody as I was in the midst of that hospital and as I had IV stick up to me, and my bed and my body was cramping and God, I still hold on to him. Yes. I remember when I first got out, somebody told me, um, somebody came to visit the house, to the house and a woman was um, going through her machine. He said, oh, God is going to heal you. I said, ma'am, I said, I'm on insulin, I'm on this, I'm on that. She said, no, God is going to heal you. And she came and she laid her hands on me and she said, God, heal him right now in the name of Jesus. 
And when she killed me, and when she laid hands on me, I felt my body would come back into normal. You see, as I was going through the sickness, I felt like everything was all lost, hope was lost. Trevor was there, he had to pick me up outside the, 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 the bathroom and put me on the bed, and I was telling him this is gonna go wrong, and my brother said, no, God is going to heal you. You see, in the midst of what you're going through, you have to understand that God can heal you. He can deliver you, he can change your life, he can fix your issue. See, many people don't understand the power of God. Yeah. You see, I remember my mom would tell me churches of old would, would even if you were sick, they just touch you and you would heal. Amen. You see, we need to get back to healing. We need to get back to miracles. We need to get back to prayer. Yeah. We need to hold on to the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You see, but Jesus has so much power and strength. Yeah. You see, he humbled himself and became man. Can you realize, can you can you understand that how he left the glory yes, of heaven yes. came down to this dark world yes. you see as the father was sitting on the throne he was talking to his son yes. the son said give me a 33 year lifespan uh -huh. wrap me in a baby My and God. i'll come back and come back to you strong yes. so he went down into he went down into the world yes. and as he went down he walked and walked yes. he was healing and he was preaching he said he's the son of god yes. pharisees hated him people wanted to kill him the jews didn't like him but as he was going through and doing that, he still was following the Father's will. Yes. You see, even when you're in the midst of people that hate you and yeah. people that want to tear you down, you still have to follow the will of God. Yes. You see, but he came to this dark world. He knew that this world was dark. He knew that he had to save humanity. You see, Jesus is the original superhero. Oh, yeah. He's the one that was able to heal you, to able to fix your life and change you for the better. Yeah. You see, nobody else done that for me. Yes. He's the only one that showed true love. Yeah. You see, many people look for love in the world, but they can't help you. Yeah, yeah. Many people look for everybody else, but they cannot show you the true love of God. Yeah, He's the yeah. one that can love you and love you. When friends walk away from you, when yeah. people try throw you away, when people reject you, when the world has left you, He's the only friend yeah, that can help yeah. you. Yeah. You see, that's why the faith say, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. You see, He's the only friend that can heal us. Yeah. He's the only friend that takes care of us. Yeah. You see, other people want stuff from you. They just want to take and take, but God yeah. gives yeah. and keeps on giving. Thank you. Yeah. See, he doesn't just push you away, but he says, you're my child. Yeah. I love you. Come unto me. Yeah. That's why Matthew says, come unto me, all the labor, and I will give you rest. Yeah. You see, you haven't had the rest until Jesus tells you to come in. Yeah. He's the one that can help you. He's the one that can give you rest. Hallelujah. You see, many people believe in other ideologies and things like that, but Apostle Paul reminds us, therefore, God has given them a name. Yes. That is above every name. Yes. His name is above your issue. His name is above your problems. His name yes. is above your, 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 what's going on in your job. Yes. You see, as I was reading the scripture, I remember I was feeling down. I read the scripture. It picked me up. Yes. It reminded me that his name yes. is greater than anything else. Yes. You see, many people love celebrity names, but I love the name of Jesus. Yes. You call the name of Jesus, I just start Jesus. running. Yes. You see, I love the name of Jesus. I love calling on his name. Yes. You see, his name can break, sick, break sickness. His yes. name can break problems. His Glory. name can yes. fix. Hallelujah. He's the only name that can break a change. Yes. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. You see, you feel better because you called his name. Jesus. You see, his name is the one you can call on. You see, I remember I tried to call on somebody else and they couldn't answer the phone. I called somebody else and they didn't answer. But he's the only one that can call, I can call on. He's the only one that I can go to. Jesus is the one that can call on. He's the one, he's the almighty God. He's the mighty God. He's the one that keeps his people. He's the one that you have, his name is glory. Yes. You see, his name is, is, is indescribable. Yes. I wish I could explain him, yes. but I can't explain him right now because he has so many titles. Yes. You see, in scriptures, he has over 2,000 names and titles. You see, some people call me Almighty God. I call him Mary's baby. Yes. I call him Moses, yes. Moses Bush on fire. Yes. I call him Lily of the Valley, bright and morning star, yes. the healer. The Redeemer, the precious Lamb of God. He's the one that's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's a divine healer. He's the one that can fix your problem. So I call on Jesus. His name breaks the chains. Many of us have gone through struggles, but call on his name. If you call on his name, he can help you. If you call on his name, he can deliver you. His name has so much power in it. Many people don't even understand the power in his name. Many people don't understand the strength in his name. His name breaks chains. Yes. His name breaks, re breaks religion. His name breaks stress and worry. Yes. His name is the one that you should call on. Yes. When you're feeling sick, call on Jesus. Yes. When you're down and out, call on Jesus. Yes. When you feel like nobody can help you, call on Jesus. Yes. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. We need to call on his name. Yes. We, we need to call his name in schools. Yes. We need to call his name on the job. Yes. We need to call his name as we're driving. Yes. Let's call on his name. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. His name is breaks. His name makes us better. Yes. His name heals our body. Yes. His name gives us strength to move on. Yes. His strength gives us speed to keep going yes. forward. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. When you call on his name this morning, Jesus. when you proclaim his name, 
I'll be on Facebook, I'll call his name. I'll call his name. I'll call his name. Call his, name. his name is Jesus. Somebody call his name. So God, his name is powerful. You see, but he's the only one that did something amazing for me. You see, when other people try to do other things, he's the only one that went to a place. What is this place called Calvary? You see, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. And for me, he died. He died on the cross. He died until the sins of man was gone. He died until he said it is finished. He died until the temple veil messed up. He died until things began to happen. He died for all of us. So he had to, he died for us and they put him in the grave. He was there in the grave all day Friday. He was there in the grave all day Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power to say, Is there anybody here who can thank God for his name? I'm so glad that Jesus is the one I call on. You see, other people, friends can't help me out. My mama can't help me out, but it's Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. That's my call I can call on. You see, in the midst of when my grandfather died, I just said, call, I said, Jesus, help me out. When my parents divorced, I said, Jesus, help me out. When I was sick, I called on Jesus. When I was down, I called on Jesus. When I was going through, I called on Jesus. Somebody call his name. Jesus. Yeah. 